Hi everybody, this is Debbie from Stamp On It and this is a jammy video. My jammy videos are we can be in our jammies and nobody knows. So let's get started. Today's video is going to be focusing on a couple of new products um, that we have on our website but also a technique and it's something that a lot of people I think would love to do but never try it because they think it's too difficult. And some of these products are gonna really simplify that for you. So let's get started. First of all today, I am gonna be working with Tombow markers. It's what we carry in our booth but also on our website. We have the full 108 colors. We're gonna be working with those, they're water-based, which is gonna really work nicely with the other products we're working with, which are watercolor brushes. Now there's a big difference in watercolor brushes as far as quality. The water brushes that we carry are Koi for the three sizes of straight brushes. And I also have a new one on our um, website. It's a water brush that is flat and this is really cool. Now this one is a um, product of Niji right there, as big as life. Um, these are Koi, these are Niji. Both excellent quality and they all have a valve in the water brush tube that keeps the water from just pouring out when you're using it and that is so important when you're using water brushes. You can get really cheap inexpensive water brushes but they do not have that valve in the tube and when you tip this it'll just the water will just come pouring out on you and you don't want that you want to be able to control that water flow and these two uh, lines of water brushes are excellent I found so I'm gonna put this stuff aside here and I'm gonna work with I'll show you these samples later again too but I want to just show you really quickly working with the water brushes another product I want to show you that we picked up is uh, watercolor paper by Ranger. Now this is some really, really cool stuff. Now, over the 30 some years, and that kind of dates me, so I shouldn't have said that, but over the years, we've always been looking for watercolor paper and there's cold pressed and there's hot pressed. And most people don't know the difference. And for most people, you probably don't really care, but hot pressed will tend to be a smoother finish. Cold pressed tends to be a bumpy or rough finish. This watercolor paper that we found has a rough or bumpy textured side to it, but it also has a smoother finish to it. And it's great for stamper people like us that want to stamp an image that has a fair amount of detail, but still watercolor. If you stamp a really fine detail on this side because of the texture, and I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but because of that texture, sometimes you lose some of that detail in the image. But I found that this cardstock has a smooth side. So when I stamp my image, it keeps all that detail and I can still go back in and watercolor if I'd like to, okay? So that's what I'm gonna be working with today is the watercolor cardstock from Ranger. And we also have that on our website. There's 10 sheets, eight and a half by 11. And it's a fairly heavy cardstock. Now, one of the cool things I found um, my particular, our particular printer, I was able to actually run this through my printer smooth, on the smooth side and print um, from some of our digi images, what we, what we call digital images on our website. So if some of you are digital image people, I was able to run this through my printer, but just know there's a 50-50 chance on that you might or might not be able to, as most, some printers do not allow that heavy of a card stack. I would call this about a, 80 to 100 pound, probably, yeah, closer to 100 pound weight. So um, stamping for sure through your printer is a 50-50 chance, but I was able to, so you can take it from there. Um, so I'm gonna just show you very quickly a couple of things here. Working with the Tombows with this, you can use any of the watercolor-based products to watercolor with the watercolor brushes. Obviously it's a water base in here. I put water in here. Um, these can also be used for bleaching if you want to do some image bleaching. And that's a whole nother area that we can get into later, but you would put bleach into here. Just remember if you do that or anything else other than water, you wanna clean these out when you're done. If I just put water in them, I store them just upright in my holder like this. So first of all, this one here is 
by Koi and I am using the large. Um, there's a small, a medium, and a large. Now, if you're going to really want to do a nice job on your images and do some detail areas, you are going to want to use a smaller, um, the smaller one here, and I am using the larger. So just keep that in mind. There's a small, a medium, and a large on this. And it does certainly make a difference because you can see how much large, larger this is on the tip. I'm also working with the flat brush. This is new. I love, absolutely love this, especially if you want to create washed areas like this. And what you can do, and I did this on the rough side, but you could also do it on the smooth side. You can stamp your image and just do a wash if you want, that type of thing. Instead of detailing, um, you can do a wash over it. And I'm going to actually show you with this one, using the wide brush, I am going to do a little imaging here. And I forgot my paper towel, so let me grab one here real quick. You want to work with a paper towel off to one side of you. Um, and I also use a palette. I'm actually using a piece of glitter film, which is a non-porous surface. But we do have uh, the Tombow blending kit, which has a palette in it too, and that's in a different video. I'll be showing that product, but I'm just using a um, piece of glitter film for my palette. And I am going to just put my colors of green on here that I want to work with. You do not have to start with a palette. You can go right directly to your cardstock with your color, but just know whenever you do that, you will lose some of the ability to move your color. Um, and you will need to use a lot more water and a lot more time uh, to do that. This is one of our Artful images that I've stamped on here. And I love uh, Artful, our Artful line. It really lends itself well to stamping and watercoloring. Um, most of our samples in our booth too are done with watercoloring. So I'm going to just start. I'm going to, I've already got my water in my brush. Okay. And when you get your brush, whether it's the flat brush or the Koi, follow the quick directions on the back side. The Koi brushes, you have to remove the plunger, the little cap that's in here to use it. This one, you leave that in. It's got a hole through the center of it so the water can flow to the valve. But just follow the quick instructions. Very simple, very easy. If I can do it, you can do it. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of um, my first shade of green off from here. And start with a scrap paper when you start doing a technique like this. And I'm just simply going to come to the and swirl up. And you can add as much or as little color as you want. But I absolutely love this flat brush. I'm just going to start with my darker shade at the bottom. Now remember people, this is watercolor. If you are a detail person and you are obsessed with detail and everything being perfect, this is not the technique for you. Uh, watercoloring is more of a abstract art look in, for the most part. You can do a lot of detail, especially with the smaller brush. But just remember, for the most part, watercoloring, it kind of says its name, watercolor. It is for just doing more of an abstract look. Now I'm going to my second lightest color, and you don't have to use these colors. You could definitely use any colors you wanted. I'm going right back over. Now, I'm not even squeezing my brush. I found that with these brushes, they're such good quality that the um, tipping of the brush pushes that color out so I don't have to squeeze it. I can simply just go back over where I've already been and the water is coming out on its own and very controlled, which is what I really like. Now, as I get to the top, I'm kind of gonna just tip my brush a little bit so I'm not using the total width of it. I could come in with my other brush if I wanted and pull that color up too into smaller areas. But for this particular project, I'm just gonna do a tipping of the brush and just bring it up. But you see what I'm saying about this is abstract. If you love detail and you want it to be perfect, this is not the technique for you. If you're going to try it and you want to try to go outside of that perfect box, which I really am more of a perfect box person, but I love the abstract look and it's, it's just easy and quick. 
Now notice I'm going over here and squeezing my brush a little bit just to get a little more liquid out and just going to move some of this color into itself. And you don't have to have it all colored. You want to leave some areas possibly that aren't colored. We're just going to pull a little bit down here so that it's not sitting there all by itself. If you can see that. You just kind of started with a darker shade and I can keep pulling that. See how I can still keep moving that color even though it's been sitting on there? I tell you this is really fun if you just want to sit and play and it's really quick and easy. And there we are. And now I can trim that. I always trim my pieces afterward. Uh, if you're changing colors completely, you want to take that paper towel you got laying set next to you and just blot your brush. If you've got an obsessed color in there that just won't come out, squeeze it a little bit and it'll clean out your brush so you can move to your next color. And that goes with the detail brush as well. Okay, same technique, just on a smaller, more detailed scale. So now I'm just gonna switch, and I threw my cover on the floor. I'm gonna switch to the smaller brush. Now when you put your cap on, Squeeze your brush together and be careful when you put your cap on because if you're not, some of these bristles will go to the outside of the cap and when you push it on, you're going to bend your bristles and you don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to take this one, which is the large of the Koi brushes for more detail. And I am just going to see if I can find my image back here, what I do with it. And I have lost it. Even when you think you're all set up and ready, we'll just use this butterfly. This is one I was working on before. And I'm going to start with a couple of shades of blue and a purple maybe. So we'll just put that color onto my palette. And I usually work from a palette just because I like to have that little added control. I can always go in and add color directly to my piece with my marker but I usually start uh, from a palette and then I can work out from there. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna start along the body where he normally would be darker. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna talk about um, another cool thing about mini stamped images and about our stamped images too. And it looks like I got a different shade of blue than the other side of the butterfly, so apologize for that. This is gonna be a little bit psychedelic but you'll get the idea as far as the technique. Um, our stamped images, many of them have shaded areas where there's dots in the image. So that tells you in those areas, the color can be and sh possibly should be darker to begin with. So when I'm done, I can always go back and I like to always do that later too sometimes is just lay a little more color into those areas. But I am going to put down a color or layer of color here on my entire piece. And notice I am not squeezing my brush. I'm just kind of pulling the color across. If I have areas where it's a little heavier, I can always add a little more color by squeezing gently on the barrel and just pulling it out. And I'm not going to go through this entire piece. Now, I can come back and I can pick up a little more color and add it to those areas where I want it to be darker. Or I can go directly to the butterfly and just add color where I want it. Those areas that I want it to be darker and then pull it out. And again, remember this is not a perfection thing. If you need to have exactly areas perfectly colored, this is not probably a technique for you. Although with the different size brushes, I will tell you, you can get really detailed. Now I'm just working with the large one here. I'm not applying a lot of color, uh, pressure, so my brush stays very pointed. Now if I wanted to, I could turn it around and I'm going to use my paper towel and just clean off my color a little bit. And I could come back from the other side and add in some purple or another color. And I can pull that across. 
again where I want it to be darker. I'm just going to put it in darker in some areas and just pull it. Now like these little circles here, I could probably even go back in right directly with my marker. I wanted those to be a little bit more intense and I could color them directly from the marker and add that color in. So you can see that there is a lot, a lot, a lot of things you can do with the watercolor. You can be very detailed, you can be very dark colors, you can really blend your colors. And you know what I found, if I don't like what I did, it's too purple or it's too blue or it's too yellow or it's too green, just keep adding color and just keep kind of blending it. You can remove some color by using your paper towel, picking up the color and pulling it back away. To make the two sides of the butterfly match, you would want to do that. Obviously, I started with the wrong shade of blue here for the other side. But you can see where I can even, after this has been laying here, I'm still moving that color. Still blending it in. And I could come in here and I could make these a little darker. Take off the color if I want on my paper towel again. So there. Oh, how well the camera shows that, but just gives you an idea of watercoloring with water brushes. I am using watercolor cardstock, which makes it very easy to move the colors. I'm just going to show you a couple of samples now my brush back my cover back on again be careful with that tip you want to protect your tips here is um, another one of our images this is also an artful image and it is just a tree and I kind of made it into like a spring flowering tree we actually have a tree outside our house here that looks very similar to this but I just took and I added a little bit of color to a very wispy light on the brush don't come in and really go heavy unless you want it to be heavy. Like the trees, I did a heavier look to them, but you certainly don't need to. And then I just came in with my flat brush again, and I added some, some sky just by wisping, picking up a little bit of color and wisping back and forth like that. Okay, now another thing you can do, which is fun, is just create a background. Uh, and this I did with a, with a wide brush. And then you can come in and if you like, you could put a sticker over it. And this is one of our medallion stickers. And then I could take that and I could frame that. And again, you could still see the water brushed look in the background where there's areas that are not colored. If you don't want them to be colored, you can come in and add a bit more detail once you put the sticker on and then actually color the sticker in with more color. And I did some of that direct with my brush to the cardstock and then just pulled the color around with my watercolor brush. Okay, here is a really cool thing. I love this. This is our Faith, Hope, and Love stamp. And I'm not sure on the name or the number. I just created a very quick background with the wide brush again. Started from the top with pink or purple and just pulled it down. I turned it around and I started with blue and washed it right into the previous color. And then I stamped over top of it. Um, you could stamp first, but I chose to stamp over top. Just depends on the look that you want. Uh, with the watercolor, pretty much if you're going to stamp your image first, make sure you use a um, permanent ink. Okay, like with the tree also, I used a permanent type ink. And you can even heat set it to make sure before you start watercoloring if you're not sure. If you're using digital images, the ink right off your printer will be heat set. So that will work as well if you are able to print on the cardstock, on the watercolor cardstock. Here is an image from QKR, and this one is uh, number 17915, Flower Border. Did this a little bit more detail with the water brush and then I came back and added a little bit of color and left it that way just direct from the marker. 
So there's some very dark areas and some water colored look. Here is Artful number 1710. And that is water colored. Here is Butterfly in Leaves from Artful. I'm just going to show you a couple quick samples here. Here is the Bunnies in Love 635 Smooching. It's one of our best selling images. We also have a die that matches this one. And I think that's the samples that I quickly had. We have some on our website as well. That is using the watercolor cardstock by Ranger, water brushes by Niji, and the Koi brushes. We have them in three sizes, small, medium, and large, and the flat brush by Koi, or by Niji, sorry. So that's just a quick rundown on some new products and just a quick technique on using them. If you have any questions, you can email us right off from our site at www.stamponit.net and check us out. We'd love to have you order. And thanks for listening.